Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to be looking at how to convert a normal TV into a smart TV without using Fire Stick or any other projecting uh, or any other devices. So we are going to be using a Raspberry Pi and a, a micro SD card. I use a 32 GB SD card. You could use an SD card which is greater than 8 GB. It could either be a 16 GB or a 32 GB and you're going to need a micro SD card reader and a few heat sinks to make sure that the Raspberry Pi doesn't get heated up so, so that the heat uh, if it in case it gets heated up due to the speed and the runtime the heat sinks would absorb the heat and using and you could use a fan with the case to let out to let the heat out back into the air so once that's done you're going to need something to control your Raspberry Pi with you could either use a USB remote or a USB uh, keyboard. So once that's done, let's get to creating it. So yeah. So here I'm going to, uh, you can either use a Bellina Etcher or Raspberry Pi Major. I'm going to use a Bellina Etcher because I'm comfortable with it. So first I'm going to give flash from file and I'm going to choose it. So once it's done, you can choose your storage device and select flash. The, uh, the links to these files will be given in the description below. So according to your net speed, it will take about six to seven minutes to flash and verify completely. So by the time let's move on and connect the fan and cases of and fan and the other pieces of Raspberry Pi together. Okay. So yeah, once the etcher is done, you can close it and remove the SD card from your system. So after that, you have, you have to keep your Raspberry Pi SD card port and the printed side of the SD card facing the same direction. And then you have to insert the SD card, micro SD card inside your Pi and you're good to go. So after inserting into the Pi, uh, the smart TV user interface is ready. But the smart TV user interface uses only 7 GB and it considers the rest as deleted portion. So in order to resize that, we are going to have a file called re, re, uh, Raspberry Pi resize. And we also need to install Play Store inside the user. We also need to install Play Store. So for that, we are going to use OpenG Apps TV stock package. The, uh, these files will be given in the description below. The download link will be given. So once you have transferred these files onto your external pen drive, eject it and we are good to go. Before uh, using this, we'll be needing a micro HDMI to HDMI screen uh, cable and a C-type cable to power the Raspberry Pi. So yeah. Once this is connected to the power source as well as the HDMI port, you can turn on the TV as well as your file. And then you can uh, uh, change the connection of the TV to the HDMI port. 
in this case minus m h to my 2. So I'm going to do that. So yeah, this is the good thing in uh, boot up. This is how the leader, this is how the smart TV boots up all based on that one. So once the boot up is complete, it will have in some, in some TVs and Raspberry Pis, you will have the option to control the Pi using your remote, TV remote. In that case, you don't need a system, you don't need a wireless keyboard. But in case, if it does not have that option, you are going to use a keyboard, a uh, wireless keyboard. For that, it's not as the same controls as a, as a normal one. So, the controls are, there are different controls and they are, they will be given in the description link below. Uh, they will be given a link in the description below. So, right now, I'll just dictate them. Uh, the most used controls. F1, when you press the F1 key, it usually takes you home. And F2 is for the back page. And F3 is to view all the open apps. F4 is to return to the common menu. F5 is to power. You long press it, you get the option to either shut down or restart the machine. And F11 is volume up. F12 is volume down. So once that's been noted down, let's get started. So yeah, so let's do HDMI and see. I'm getting an option to control Raspberry Pi on my TV, so I'm going to choose Raspberry Pi right now. So once it's launched, So yeah, it's gonna come searching for accessories for a while. Then it's gonna come start. So when it does that, you can use your keyboard or your mouse and accept the end user license agreement. Next. So yeah. Choose English United States and next for the time. Uh, right now, the time is 10 o'clock, but yeah, there is an option. So yeah, there's a small glitch in the OS and it will be rectified soon. That's done. The current time is one fourteen fifty-one. Now it's nine fifty-five p.m. and there you go. So you can connect to your Wi-Fi. You you can connect to your Wi-Fi using your password here and there. For this part, I'm gonna. Use my keyboard. Once I've done it, I can just say it's next.
once you're connected to the Wi-Fi, uh, you just proceed to okay, next. Uh, if it's asked to restore data, just hit skip and next start. So uh, this is the major. This is how it's going to look, but with the Play Store and the other apps, this is just the main part. So now we are going to head from network and internet to system, then buttons and advanced reboot. So once that's done, just go back and go to system and go to system again. This time scroll all the way to the bottom. Reboot and reboot to recovery, not system, reboot to recovery and plug in your USB device into Raspberry Pi. So for this setup, you're going to need your mouse and your keyboard. In TWRP, the remote doesn't work. So yeah, go to install and choose your storage to be the USB drive. Then give OK. So first, we are going to resize the lineage files and flash it so yeah then click on wipe the RVIC then wipe it and then click the home screen button again go to install and this time we're going to install the gapps package and swipe to flash This will take a little bit more uh, extra time to do it completely. Get installed completely, it's gonna take some time. It depends on your next speed, the installation. So once that's done, So yeah, once the installation completes itself, we are again going to give wipe the Alvik and I'm going to wipe it completely. So after that, we are going to reboot the system. Yeah. So once you reboot, you are going to notice that the Google Play Store will be available as well as the, um, the uh, YouTube comes basically pre-installed already. So it will be available. You can install any other OTT platforms you like. Even you, can, you could even you uh, install any any app, but most of the uh, any app that runs on a smart TV. Yeah. Right now the Constacam version of the Lineage OS has minor glitches in Disney Plus Hotstar. So other than that, it runs everything, including Netflix. Netflix, you're going to have to install an external uh, file, Android file called as Aptoid, 
which lets you run Netflix because it net uh, it can it's, it's considered uh, Netflix considers Raspberry Pi to be a little bit dangerous to run their app. So yeah, just uh, skip through the setup. It's going to ask the same questions again. So it's going to ask through the same setup again. And if you'd like, you can set up with your Android phone. Yeah. So once this setup is done, you can uh, just go back to using your you can go back to using your smart TV. So yeah, once the installation and uh, once the installation gets done and you complete the setup, you're going to get something like this. With YouTube, Disney Plus, Hotstar, with, with YouTube pre-installed, you will you're gonna have to install Disney Plus, Hotstar, and other platforms. So yeah, I'll just show that. So I'm going to be going to YouTube and playing a random video. Yeah. Let's see. Let's play the teaser of the movie that's going So yeah. There he is. Yeah. Good.